Welcome to this podcast about melanoma and genetic traits. I'm Dr. Susana Puig. I'm the chief of the dermatology department at the Hospital Clinic in Barcelona. Human skin have many, many, many colors, but does this genetic background influence dermoscopy of the lesions that we can see? In fact, some years ago, Dr. Iselautek already described that the dermoscopy of nevi can be different according to the phototype. Being moles in fair skin and phototype 1 larger and with central hypopigmentation, while those people with dark skin, phototype 4 or 5, they have smaller nevi and with central hyperpigmentation. In this study, it was demonstrated an inverse correlation between the size of nevi and the pigmentation being larger and hypopigmented in fair skin and darker and smaller in diameter in dark skin. The main gene responsible of human pigmentation is MC1R. MC1R is a receptor of alpha MSH. This gene is extremely polymorphic in Caucasians. Hundreds of variants are described, but there are nine prevalent variants in MC1R common in Caucasian population. Six of these variants are strongly associated with red hair. We had the opportunity to analyze the phenotype of nevi in control population in our country, in Spain, according to the different variants in MC1R. The first interesting result was that the presence of blue nevi was strongly correlated with the presence of red hair variants. Concerning dermoscopy, we identify an increase of eccentric hyperpigmentation in those individuals with red hair variants. And the presence of dots and globules in nevi was also associated with the presence of any variant but more strongly with the presence of red hair variants. Concerning the total nevus count of nevus larger than 2 mm in diameter, it was also interesting to see that this number increased with the presence of any variant or with the presence of red hair variants, being nearly double this count in red hair variants individuals compared with wild type individuals. In fact, the maximum diameter of nevi on the back according to MC1R polymorphisms varies according to the number of red hair variants. Being this maximum diameter smaller in those individuals with wild type or normal MC1R and being larger in those individuals with two red hair variants. As you can see here, represented all the different possibilities of the size of this larger nevi on the back. Recently, researchers from China tried to revalidate our results in their population. In fact, the presence of polymorphisms in MC1R in that population is smaller. Even there are some non-red hair variants that are prevalent. There are very few cases of red hair variants. In addition, most of the population there have very few nevi. More than 80% of them have no nevi and a small proportion, one, two or three nevi. But in fact, with this very small number of nevi, it was not possible to revalidate our previous results. 
We already know that these red hair variants may influence dermoscopy of nevi, but the question could be if also dermoscopy of melanoma can be influenced by the presence of red hair variants in MC1R. And some years ago, with uh, Francisco Cuellar, we did this study in which we included the dermoscopy image of early melanomas in patients belonging to families with familial melanoma and mutations in CDKN2A, the main gene for familial melanoma. And in this study, what we saw is that those melanomas belonging to patients with two red hair variants, uh, there are the melanomas that you can see in the right part of the slide, in the right column of the slide, these melanomas have, with two red hair polymorphisms, they have less dermoscopic criteria and less dermoscopic colors and indeed they were false negatives for dermoscopy because they have a, a lower TDS in the range of benignity. We also had the opportunity to analyze the dermoscopy of very early melanomas in the limbs in patients at high risk and in this study that we performed with Dr. Carrera we were able to identify four different dermoscopic patterns. The first pattern was associated with red hair patients and was characterized by the presence of an atypical pigment network, but this atypical pigment network was orange in color. It means it was not dark. And in these cases, you can see that it's difficult to recognize the atypical pattern because the lack of different colors. Here you can see confocal microscopy of this melanoma, this, this very early melanoma, in which atypical cells are very large and bright under confocal because pheomelanin is also bright and you can see the correlation with histopathology. The second pattern was characterized by the presence of dotted vessels and this pattern was present not only in people with fair skin or red hair, but also in albino patients. Recently, we had the opportunity to analyze the dermoscopic patterns in albino patients, and one of the characteristics is the presence of dotted vessels and the absence of pigmentation. The third pattern that we described in early melanomas in the limbs was a pattern that was not associated with red hair, but in individuals with eumelanin. In this pattern, we can see an atypical pigment network that is dark and a clear asymmetry. In these cases, it's quite easy to recognize the lesion as atypical because with dark pigmentation, it's much more easy to identify this pattern. Finally, the fourth pattern is a pattern characterized by the presence of perifollicular irregular pigmentation. This pattern was also seen in individuals with different variants but non-red hair variants. With more magnification you can see here this irregular atypical peripheral pigmentation that corresponds at this pathological level with these lentiginous lesions with a specific folliculotropism. Now we will move to another gene that is very important also for the risk of melanoma and pigmentation that is MITF. MITF can have a rare mutation that is the E318K and this mutation is associated with a high nevus count and also the presence of a reticular pattern in most of the nevi. This was originally described in Australia, but we had the opportunity to also analyze this mutation in patients from Spain, and we saw also this high number of nevi in some of the patients and the presence of this reticulation in most of the nevi. We had also the opportunity to analyze the dermoscopy of some of the melanomas in these patients, and they were lesions that were really fast growing. Uh, these patients developed melanomas that were thick and were not present in previous controls. In the, in the first one is uh, on, the, on the top of the image, and this lesion was developed in two months, 
And the second case in another patient in the bottom of the image, it was a melanoma that was developed in less than three, four weeks. It was not present one month ago and the patient explained to us that the lesion appeared two weeks ago and this melanoma had 1.3 millimeters thickness. In fact, the team of Giorgio and co-workers in Italy described an association between this mutation in MITF E318K with the presence of nodular melanoma. Finally, I want to show you the different dermoscopic patterns that have been described associated to mutations in BAC1. BAC1 is a mutation that can appear in uh, an EVI and produces specific changes in dermoscopy, but also patients with germline mutations in BAP1 can develop many tumors with these dermoscopic characteristics. It is important to recognize these patients because these patients have an increased risk to develop cutaneous melanoma, to develop uveal melanoma, and also many other types of cancer, including mesothelioma or renal carcinoma. There are different dermoscopic patterns associated to these mutations, but I would like to stress the importance of these areas with hypopigmentation, uh, areas that are pink structureless with some peripheral vessels and the presence of some irregular pigment network or irregular dots and globules distributed at the periphery of the tumors. With these patterns, we can recognize those carriers of BAP1 mutations and suggest a specific genetic counseling in the context of familial melanoma. With this, I would like to thank you for your attention.